I'd like to start by sharing a handy little tip to encourage pupils to only use their index finger and thumb when practicing fine motor pincer grasp activities. Ask the pupil to lay their hand out flat with their palm facing up. Place a two pence coin in the centre of their hand and ask them to hold on to the coin with their three fingers, leaving their index finger and thumb unrestricted. Explain to the pupil that the challenge is to complete an activity without letting the coin drop out of their hand. The first pincer grip idea is opening and closing a coin purse. For this, you want to encourage the child to only use their index finger and thumb. But this task is also good for wrist rotation, which is another fine motor skill. So as the child opens the purse, encourage them to twist their wrist as well as use their pincer grip. You can then place some coins inside the purse and ask the child to remove the coins only using their pincer grip. You could also turn this into a maths activity of counting the money and when you're finished ask the pupil to return the money back to the purse still using their pincer grip and to close the purse with their pincer grip. The next activity is using a spinner. You can find these at a very low cost from places like Poundland or the 99p store. Sometimes they're even in Christmas crackers, so if you do find one in your Christmas cracker, make sure you save it. Again, this activity is not only good for pincer grip, but also for wrist rotation. This one is using a wind-up toy, and like the last activity, it focuses on both pincer grasp and wrist rotation. Encourage the child to hold the toy still in one hand and only use pincer grasp and the rotation of their wrist to wind up the toy. It's super important to point out that when completing activities like these, they must be done in midair and not leaning on a table, as we want to encourage the child to fully manipulate the object without relying on the table to take their weight. This one is using nuts and bolts. I'm using a chunky plastic one, which is designed as a fine motor tool. However, depending on the age of the child you're working with, you can actually use real metal nuts and bolts. And they're great to use because you can find them in lots of different sizes and there are lots of varieties of nuts and bolts. Again, this exercise focuses on pincer grip and wrist rotation. Encourage the child to use both of their hands, not just their dominant hand, and encourage the child to really twist their wrist and don't let them cheat by just flicking the, um, the nut around the bolt. Make sure they're really twisting with their wrist. This next activity is a matching task that focuses on pincer grip. So as you can see here, it's very, very simple to make. It's simply an upside down egg box with some coloured pom poms. The idea is that you ask the child to match the colours using their pincer grip.
This activity is attaching pegs to a paper plate and it's to encourage pincer grasp. When doing this activity, it's useful to collect a variety of different types of pegs as each peg will require a different amount of pressure and manipulation. You could also turn this activity into a matching activity like this. Again, this is a very low cost activity and simple to make. This activity is pulling straws and pipe cleaners from the top of a Pringles tube. This exercise focuses on pincer grasp and precision. It's super easy to make. First, make sure you eat all the Pringles from the tube. Then, make small holes on the lid. Insert different sized straws and pipe cleaners and leave only a few centimetres of each poking out of the top. This is to ensure the pupil only uses their pincer grip to remove them. Once all straws and pipe cleaners have been removed, ask the child to carefully put them all back. This final fine motor exercise focuses on pincer grasp. For this activity, you'll need to cut up pieces of sponge into strips. This activity is just like the game Jenga. The idea is to very carefully use the pincer grasp as well as the correct amount of speed and precision to remove the strips of sponge without knocking the tower down. You can build the tower as high as you like and take it in turns with your child or pupil to remove the strips. When the tower falls down, the game is over. 
Thanks for watching. I hope some of the ideas and activities in this video are helpful. For lots more fine motor ideas and activity sheets, head over to www.redbridgecirc.org. And for more videos, please subscribe to the SEAT's YouTube channel. Thanks again. Bye.